I recently completed my road trip back from Vancouver, Canada, and on my way, I picked up 30 keys. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video with Swaggle Haas. And as you can see, I am finally back home in front of my comic book wall. I got my new ASM-6 uh, over my shoulder there behind me, and uh, it feels great. It feels great to be back. Uh, now, I know what you're thinking. It's looking a little slab heavy uh, over my right shoulder. And uh, yeah, I kind of agree with you. So uh, I don't know. We'll see what happens uh, over the next coming months or, or whatever if I end up adding more slabs. But uh, I don't know if I'm going to have the budget to do it. Uh, but, uh, you know, I'm very, very happy to add another one uh, to the wall. And uh, in this video, I do have a lot of other raw books to show off to you guys here today because uh, as you may know, I was in Vancouver, Canada and uh, me and my wife, we actually decided to, instead of, you know, head back home and go straight back home, we decided to just sort of do a road trip back home. And we ended up stopping over in a bunch of different cities throughout the Midwest. And uh, you know me, I had to uh, pop over to any LCS I could on the way back uh, down home. So uh, I was able to find myself in seven different LCSs uh, just throughout different cities on my way back to uh, Los Angeles and uh, as a result picked up 30 key books here. So uh, I'm going to show them off with you guys here today but uh, before I do if you guys could drop me a like or a comment or a subscribe if you're enjoying the content help support the channel doing those things and uh, yeah I'd appreciate it. All right let's get into the good stuff now and uh, I'm just going to kind of tear through some of these books, talk about the spec, talk about why I picked them up. And uh, you know, uh, there's some there's some cool ones in here. Definitely some stuff that I've been looking for overall. And this one right here uh, being one of them, the very first one off the bat is Thor number 135. And what is the significance of this? Well, this is actually the second appearance and origin of the High Evolutionary. It's also the first appearance of a character known as Fafnir. And it is also, uh, Key Collector actually mentioned this as being the first time that Thor actually refers to his hammer as Mjolnir. Kind of a small little thing, but uh, kind of cool. I didn't really know about that. Uh, but this was one that I've always been looking for. This is a really nice high grade copy. It's a white cover, uh, very hard to find white covers in high grade, uh, but this one was very clean. And I ended up finding it for 20 bucks, which overall is a pretty good deal uh, in my opinion, being that this book, um, every time I've come across it, which has been multiple times uh, and much lower grade, every time I've come across it, uh, it's always been kind of overpriced or not necessarily overpriced, but uh, more than say what you could get on eBay. So uh, I've always passed over this one, uh, but it's one that I've always wanted to have because one, I love the high evolutionary. Uh, I have his first appearance somewhere behind my head uh, and I wanted to have his second appearance and uh, and this is also his origin. So I also just wanted to read it. And again, I'm somebody who believes that the high evolutionary uh, will probably find his way into the MCU eventually. I think currently the high evolutionary is one of the most undervalued books uh, there is in the market for like an A-tier supervillain. Uh, it's crazy that, you know, some of the prices aren't uh, through the roof, especially considering when you compare them to, you know, books like White Vision. All right, the next one I got here, I actually showed this off on my Instagram. Uh, this is Tales to Astonish, number 90. What is the significance of this? Well, this is the first appearance of the character known as Abomination. Ended up picking this one up for 20 bucks. Uh, and this is like the fifth copy I have of this book. I don't know. I don't know about you guys, but I don't know if you're out there. It's like, are there certain books that you just always have the knack of finding? Like you just always come across them. It feels like this is the one for me that I do that because I, every time I'm in LCSs, I just happen to find that one. And uh, it's great because uh, I'm stacking these guys right now. And when we get She-Hulk in that first trailer, uh, I'm definitely going to uh, cash in on that equity. All right, next one here I got is Wolverine number one. Of course, uh, if you saw my uh, top 50 books in my collection, I mentioned Wolverine number one as being my top book because it belonged to my brother. Uh, and uh, I always wanted to have a second copy because I have a full run of Wolverine, one through 75, I believe it is. And, uh, you know, for me, I love the run, uh, but I might want to... Uh, part ways with that run eventually, you know, may, may, may want to trade that eventually. And uh, for that reason, I needed this number one issue because uh, I'm not going to sell the, the number one book that belonged to my brother. So I uh, found this one, 30 bucks, not a bad, not a bad price, uh, considering that, you know, even though this is one of those books that was kind of memed on as being like, oh, everybody has it and there's a million copies. Uh, I look at the eBay price right now and, and this is pretty expensive still. So uh, definitely glad I have a second copy of that uh, because I might want to uh, eventually sell my entire run. Although, do people buy runs? Let me know out there in the comments. Have you guys had any luck selling runs overall? Uh, I feel like I've seen them every now and again on eBay. Uh, all right, next one here I also showed off on Instagram. This is Ghost Rider number 31, first 
full appearance of the Midnight Suns. Uh, now, the hot book, I think, is number 27. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. That's the first appearance of Midnight Suns, but I think it's been deemed a cameo. So I don't know. This book has gotten hot. The cameo book has gotten hot. Uh, definitely go check your Ghostwriter bins if you come across it. I found that one for $4. So, uh, you know, th they're out there. They're definitely in the bins. Don't go buy them on eBay. Definitely check the, the LCSs, and uh, I think you can find good deals if you do. All right, the next one here is a very cool one. I got this one for $3, as so you can see from the price tag here. Uh, I got this, uh, this is Defenders number 84. And what is the significance of this? Well, this is actually the first time that Namor and Black Panther have a battle. And I know that that might seem kind of, you know, ins insignificant in some kind of way, but uh, this book has absolutely exploded on eBay. I mean, you look at some of the prices right now for this, it's going crazy. And one of the reasons for that is because it's been, not necessarily confirmed, but rumored uh, that Namor is going to make an appearance in the Black Panther 2 film. Uh, so everyone is thinking that Namor might be the villain. Uh, so, you know, people are jumping on this this battle, you know, Namor versus Black Panther. Now, I don't actually know if this is the first time they meet or if this is just billed as their first battle. Uh, I'm not really sure. But again, uh, the Defenders title, you know, I've talked about this one before. Uh, I feel like there's a lot of sleeper books in the Defenders title overall. Very underrated series. Uh, not only did I get one copy of that, I should have showed these together. I actually got two copies of that one. Now, this one was actually from a different LCS, you know. So, uh, oh yeah, to recap, I was in Vancouver, then I went to Seattle, then I went to Walla Walla, then I went to Boise, Idaho, then I went to Eli, Nevada, then I went to Las Vegas, Nevada, then I cut over to Los Angeles. So that's where I was uh, jumping in all the shops. Uh, so I found this one in a different shop, ended up paying up $10 for this one. So uh, not quite as good of a deal as I got for the one that I paid $3. All right, next up here, I got Captain America number 290. And what is the significance of this? Well, this is actually the first appearance of Mother Midnight. Now, Mother Midnight is the uh, daughter of Red Skull. Later on in comic books, she would be known as Sin. And recently, it's been rumored that Sin is going to be the main villain of the Captain America 4 movie. Now, I'm not actually sure that I buy those rumors uh, overall. I'm a little bit skeptical that there would actually be confirmation or a script written already about uh, Sin being included in the Captain of Four movie. But I don't know where these leaks come from. People obviously have their sources. Regardless, this is a book that has heated up recently uh, and one that I will probably move on with, uh, you know, just because it's, it's a hot book right now. Pick this one up for uh, $4. Uh, again, this is one that I think is really interesting because over the course of Falcon and Winter Soldier, whenever I was digging through Captain America sections, uh, I, of course, was always coming across this one, uh, looking for the other key books leading up to Falcon and Winter Soldier. And, uh, and, but I never grabbed this one. And then, sure enough, now that it's hot, uh, I'm, I'm looking for it again, and I was able to you know, finally find a copy. All right, next up here we have not one, not two, but three copies of Doctor Strange number 60. And what is the significance of this? Well, this is actually uh, an issue, a storyline issue where Dracula is in pursuit of the Darkhold and he's going against Scarlet Witch, Captain Marvel, and Doctor Strange. And this is a book that, uh, you know, I'm not really sure. I haven't read it yet. I'm going to definitely read this and see, you know, where it, it might, you know, uh, be leading to in terms of storyline. But this is one that has absolutely gone nuts online uh, because of WandaVision, because of the speculation of like, okay, what's happening with Darkhold? Here we see this trio again, Captain Marvel, Scarlet Witch, Doctor Strange, maybe Dracula is going to come and Doctor Strange too, who really knows? Uh, but this is one that has gotten super, super hot. And I happened to come across this three different times in three different LCSs, which is great. Uh, you know, it was really funny because uh, when I was with my wife, I was going through, or I was go, I, would, I would tell her, I'd be like, hey, I'm just going to pop over to this LCS and you know she'd hit me with a fat eye roll but uh you know she she's she's great she always let me do it and uh you know but I felt the pressure like I, I couldn't spend hours in there I had to just like hit the sections flip really quick look for key bucks and uh, I went and I saw uh, I would always go to the Doctor Strange section because I was looking for these particular books uh so I ended up getting lucky and finding three of them one for five one for four one for three so uh three copies definitely excited to grab these guys and uh you know two newsstands I don't know if this is uh, special because it's a newsstand, but who really knows? All right, the other one I grabbed here is actually uh, right after I flipped past 60, I got number 61. And what is the significance of this? Well, this is the origin of vampires in the Marvel uh, in Marvel comic books. So uh, really interesting to me 
This is kind of a more of an odd spec. You know, I'm not really sure if this is going to pay off in any kind of way, but one that I thought was worth picking up overall. Um, of course, you know, we, we, we all speculate that Dracula might come into the MCU. There's ties to the Dark Hold. We might see vampires. We're talking Midnight Suns. We're talking Marvel horror. Uh, this is another book that has gotten kind of hot on speculation recent, recently. Uh, this one I paid $7 for, so uh, kind of worth it. I don't know. Could be cool. I'm definitely going to read it and see if that gives me speculation ideas. All right, next up here, I got two Avengers books to help with my Avengers run. Uh, of course, Avengers number 68 right here, and then I got Avengers number 91. Both of these extremely low grade. Uh, they had a little bit of water damage, but being that they're both kind of filler run Avengers issues, I had no problem uh, paying $3 and $3 for two damage Silver Age books. Uh, I thought that that was okay to complete my run. Again, it's a little bit ugly here along the spine, uh, but you know, it's it's not too bad because uh, you know, I, I got still got some big Avengers books to pick up. Definitely can't be wasting all my money on uh, the filler runs. So glad I picked these two up. And now I think I am at 37 of 100. Uh, for my Avengers Grail run, so not too bad, not too bad overall. I I, I think I'm I'm doing pretty good so far. The Black Knight book is going to be a hard one for me to get. All right, next up here, I got uh, Secret War number one. Now, uh, this is the first appearance of a Doctor Doom related character. I'm not going to go into it with you guys here today because uh, I'm going to talk about this in a video coming out tomorrow. So stay tuned for that. Uh, it's going to be a cool video. Uh, I'm, I'm excited to, to drop it. Uh, but I did want to show this off because this is Secret War number one. And what do you see there on the cover right there? That is an autograph. This one was written by Brian Michael Bendis. And if you ask me, that looks like Bendis' autograph. Now let me just show you guys right there. That says Bendis to me. So I thought that this, this was pretty cool. If this book ever blows up, uh, it'll be one that maybe I can send to CBCS, get that signature verified and, and, and kind of command a, a premium on my return. All right, next up here, I got Fantastic Four number 140. What is the significance of this? This is the origin of Annihilus. Very cool book. Uh, definitely something that I think will, it is already kind of hot. You know, I got this for $4, probably going up right now on eBay for around that $20 mark. Uh, but this is definitely one that I think could absolutely explode if we get Annihilus. I feel like Annihilus, like the High Evolutionary, is another villain whose book is actually undervalued. Uh, great buy. I think it's very possible that we get Annihilus as sort of like a, a just a, a big threat, one-off movie villain for the Fantastic Four to go against. I could definitely see that happening. So I'm pretty bullish on Annihilus. All right, next up here, I'm going to talk about, this is uh, Fantastic Four Annual Number 25. I am also not going to talk about this book yet. Uh, picked this one up for five dollars, uh, but I uh, am pretty high on this book. Again, video coming out tomorrow. Video coming out tomorrow. Uh, this one right here, again, a very cool book. This is Daredevil 132, second appearance of Bullseye. Found this one for seven dollars. Uh, one that I'm very excited to have. I really want to get first appearance of Bullseye. I've been trying really hard to find a sneaky under FMV copy of first appearance of Bullseye. There's definitely ones that I could maybe snipe on live auction on eBay, but uh, I've, I've been waiting. I've been waiting for that one. Definitely want to get my hands on Bullseye. I think we would probably be due for Bullseye soon. Uh, in the MCU, if in fact we're getting Daredevil in the MCU. All right, next up here, this is Daredevil 254. Uh, and this is the first appearance of Typhoid Mary. She's a mutant villain. This book has gotten really hot recently because she's been involved in the current Zadarsky Daredevil storyline. So that's really cool. Uh, she's been a character that, you know, um, C tier or whatever, but uh, this is her first appearance. And this one, you know, $20, $25 book. Uh, I found this one for $3. So very cool to have my hands on that one. Uh, I suppose I, I want to talk about these Daredevil's uh, books in, in, in tandem. I, I forgot to mention, uh, one of the LCSs that I went to was actually just an old used bookstore. And this, 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 is, this book right here is the one that I'm like the most, I got the most excited for finding. Uh, so I went to this old used bookstore and you know how it is. It's like sometimes you guys go in the bookstore and you're just sort of curious, like, hey, maybe they have comic books. And in this particular, and most of the time they don't. Uh, but this particular instance, they had one box, one long box of comic books. And I was super excited and I flipped through that thing. And uh, there weren't there weren't too many things. I got the Annihilus book in it. I got these Daredevil ones. Uh, but this one was also very cool that I found. Uh, this is Daredevil 270. Got it for $3 in a used bookstore. First appearance of Blackheart. 
Uh, this is a great book. This is one that I feel like is always missing uh, whenever you go to LCSs and check uh, the Daredevil section. I feel like this book is never in stock. Uh, but, uh, you know, First Parents of Blackheart, Son of Mephisto. Uh, you know, I know. I know Mephisto's the meme. Uh, my... my uh, my bullishness on Mephisto is definitely going down with with each new Disney Plus show. Uh, I, I feel like maybe maybe it's not actually going to happen, but who knows? We never really know. All right, next up here is another sort of Doctor Strange Fantastic Four spec. This is first appearance of Darkoff, Fantastic Four 142. Uh, this is just a demon character I've always kind of thought was interesting. Has ties to kind of Doctor Doom. Has ties to you know other demonic. Uh, characters and things like that. Who really knows? I mean, I, I don't think that this character is going to show up in the MCU anytime soon. But, uh, you know, I found this one. But I believe this was $5 I think I got it for. So, hey, early Fantastic Four. First appearance of a random kind of demon character. Five bucks. Why not? kind of always wanted to get that one. All right. Let's just rapid fire now to the next couple ones here. Uh, mm -hmm. I got Marvel 2 and 129. This is for $2. This is the second appearance of Spider-Woman. Although it is just a cameo appearance, so second cameo, I guess you call it. I talked about this book on the channel before. This is Defenders, number 143. Got this one for a dollar. Uh, this is the first appearance of a character known as The Runner. I'm very high on any cosmic Marvel character. I will always pick them up. Gardner, uh, Ego, uh, The Runner, Inbetweener, all those characters. I will always grab them. All right, I've talked about these ones here, or I've talked about this series here on the channel a couple times. World of Warcraft, that is right. I'm still bullish on World of Warcraft. Uh, for those who know, this is the first appearance of Jane and Proudmoore in comic books, and this is the first appearance of Thrall in comic books. So two World of Warcraft books that I picked up. Hey, this long-term spec, you never really know. All right, next up here, I have Peter Parker, the Spectacular Spider-Man, number nine. And this is the first appearance of the White Tiger in comic books. Now, it's not the White Tiger's first appearance overall. Um, that, I believe, is in a kind of like a magazine issue. Name escapes me right now. Uh, but this is a character that I think is really interesting. You know, I don't, I don't know if we're going to get the White Tiger anytime soon, but a Latino superhero or anti-hero or whatever you want to call the White Tiger, uh, you know, feels like if, if uh, Marvel's still doing the diversity thing or push towards the diversity thing, this could be a good character they bring onto the table. Now, there is a more modern female version of this character, so I don't know. Maybe they would go with the female version and maybe that particular book, uh, which again, escapes me as well. Could be White Tiger number one. Uh, that one might be the winner book with regards to this character. But uh, you know, every time I come across Spect Spectacular Spider-Man number nine, I always want to pick it up. Uh, this is actually my second copy now. All right. Next up here, we have two books. This is Thor number 387 and Thor number 388. And what is the significance of this? This is the first cameo and first full appearance of a celestial known as Exitar. Now, Exitar is supposed to be the strongest celestial. Uh, now, I don't know if we're going to get Exitar in the MCU in any kind of way. I don't know if they're going to personify the Celestials. I'm sure that we will get Erishim the Judge, you know, it, uh, maybe in the Eternals movie, maybe that'll be the one Celestial they focus on. But uh, hey, you know, anything Celestial right now, anything Celestial spec, I feel like I, it's worth picking up because you, you never know where they're going to go with it uh, in the storyline. So uh, 387, 388, uh, this is some Copper Age Thor books. Uh, I've come across these a few times, decided to pick them up. Uh, they were $3 each. So uh, thought it was worth it coming off the heels of the eternal trailer you never really know all right three more books here thanks for uh, sticking with me here guys uh these ones are some some later copper age stuff uh this one right here sleepwalker number one that is right i found a sleepwalker number one for six dollars and i thought it was worth picking up uh do i think sleepwalker is ever going to come to the mcu Probably not. Probably not. But uh, again, he just brings me back nostalgia-wise. You guys know I love Dark Hawk. Sleepwalker came out at the same time. Uh, definitely a character that I was like, Dark Hawk is way cooler than Sleepwalker. But uh, who knows? You know, it's kind of a wacky character. Kind of cool. Very, very creative uh, in terms of like the creation of the character. So I figured, hey, why not pick up a another copy of Sleepwalker number one? All right, next up here we have the Uncanny X-Men number 199. First appearance of Rachel Summers as the second Dark Phoenix. Uh, but I've talked about this book on a sleeper spec video I talked about uh, a few weeks on the channel, which was this is actually the first appearance of the Freedom Force. And I'm pretty interested overall in the Freedom Force and what they might do in the MCU. Uh, I had some speculation that maybe Contessa uh, has some, it will have some connection with the Freedom Force. Of course, Freedom Force is the um, governmental agency that looks that uh, goes after mutants led by Mystique. So I feel like there's, you know, uh, room to grow with a book like this. They could definitely use the Freedom Force in some kind of way. So 
one that I wanted to pick up, $7. Uh, not a book that I had, but uh, one that I was happy to grab. All right, and the last book I have here is one that I've always wanted to come up, always wanted to pick up, never found this book, never come across it. Uh, it's always missing in the X-Men section, but now I finally ran across it. And this, of course, is X-Men number 184. Got this one for $9, and what is the significance of this? This is the first appearance of the character known as Forge. Now, we all remember Forge from the X-Men cartoon. He's a great X-Men character. I don't know if he's going to be the character that uh, shows up in the MCU. You know, he's, he's definitely on the B tier when it comes to X-Men heroes, but Forge is a great character, one that hasn't been represented on screen, and this is a book that feels uh, like is a great sleeper pick to get your hands on if you do come across it. So uh, one that I was happy to find. Finally, Again, this is a book that always eludes me whenever I go hunting, uh, but this time I finally found it. All right, well, that is my video. Those were 30 keys that I picked up in seven different stores in five different cities. Uh, hopefully, hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Uh, let me know how you think I did. Let me know what books you guys picked up recently. Uh, thanks so much for watching. Drop me a like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.